Let's talk about another bank that I'm in trouble with. <laughs> I'm actually in proper trouble with this bank. This is the Royal Bank of Scotland. I'm in... Right, so Peter worked not for RBS. He worked in an RBS building in Pigeon Park in Birmingham, if you know it. He was working in an office space in this building. And um, I went into that office with him last summer. And as a result of that, he had to write a letter of apology to the manager of the building a few days later. <laughs> and I'll just read to you that letter. He wrote, Dear Sir, I am writing to explain the incident in your office and offer my sincere apologies for any involvement on my part. I invited a guest to the building to show them a project we had been working on and benefit from his expertise. What had actually happened was we were on the piss and he had a bottle of wine under his desk. <laughs> At security, he was asked to enter his name for a guest pass. I did not see what he typed because I was dealing with some emails on my phone. Uh, they get you to type in your name on a fancy touchscreen as you go into the RBS building. I didn't want to do that. I was feeling silly. So what I did is I just typed in the first two words that came to mind, which happened to be rhubarb bikini. I don't know why. <laughs> there was a short discussion between my guest and the security guard. This is where the security guard quite rightly said, what's that? And I said, it's pronounced Ryan. <laughs> and he said... It's spelt rhubarb. And I said, yes, it's Irish. <laughs> then a pass was printed and we were allowed into the building. Here is that pass. <laughs> Subsequently, an image of the pass appeared on social media. I put that on uh, Instagram with the caption, someone broke into RBS with the pseudonym rhubarb bikini. <laughs> The minute I discovered this, I asked for this image to be removed, but I appreciate that by that point, damage had been done to the reputation of the business. It got about 10,000 likes. I <laughs> offer a full and sincere apology for this. Regards, Peter. He was taken in for a disciplinary a few days after we did this. They slid this pass over to him and said, do you know this man? I just love the idea of him going, that's Rhubarb Bikini! <laughs> a few weeks later, I received this letter to my home address in the name of Colonel Rhubarb Bikini. <laughs> Full disclosure, that's because I've opened an account with RBS in the name of Rhubarb Bikini. Here's me opening the account. Colonel, I went with Colonel, I thought that was funny. Are you known by any other name? No. <laughs> Born in North Korea, living with parents. He's lived a life. He's lived a life, old Rhubarb. They, they ask you to fill out a form when you've opened an RBS account to say, is there anything else that would have made your application experience better today? I thought about that long and hard, and I put, yeah, a hand job would have done it, actually. <laughs> I would have taken the edge off, really. <laughs> he rang me, he said, Joe, we're in a lot of trouble. I was like, what do you mean? He said, I've just had this disciplinary, I've been banned from the office for two months. And I said, I'm so, I was really shocked, I'm so sorry, what an overreaction, like, it's just a silly joke. And he said, oh, I don't really mind, like, I don't like working there, so I'm happy to have the time off. But he said, you're in proper trouble. I was like, what do you mean? And he said, well, because you said someone broke into RBS on the Instagram post, they can't pin it on you, the picture's quite blurry, so they're going back through all of the CCTV footage to see what we did in there. We were in there for eight minutes, apparently, we were giggling in the lift. Um, I can believe it. He said, they're going back through all your social media to see if you're a threat to the business, if you've done something like this before, whether you're likely to do it again. I was like, what do you mean they're going through all my social media? It's like, your Instagram, your Twitter, everything. They're going through everything. And I thought, oh my God, they're going through everything. So they, they will have seen that picture of me pretending to be a vomiting cat. <laughs> they will have seen that picture of an egg that I put Iggy Azalea's face on and called it Eggy Azalea. <laughs> God, they will have seen that tweet which I did, which is, I like my sex like I like my Brexit. Hard and overseen by Theresa May. <laughs> God, they will have seen all the times I dressed up as Theresa May using things that are just nearby. <laughs> I've done loads of these. She's a style icon, this woman. She's a style icon. Right. <laughs> Take this one, and this is the original, an extraordinary photo in its own right. This is my version. Right. <laughs> The neck is a chorizo, the woman's face is a sculpture that I made, the earring is a courgette. <laughs> Strong work from Joe Lysa all round. I said, oh my God, they will have seen that sign that I posted which reads, this seating area is for customers of Costa Coffee only, which I sent direct to Costa Coffee with the caption, just sat here and drank a Cafe Nero and the shit all you can do about it. <laughs> 
said, oh, my God, they will have seen that time I was on the Lorraine Kelly show and gave Lorraine a quiche Lorraine. She was very confused. <laughs> Oh my God, they will have seen those tweets which I did, which started with, I love the Saturdays, hard to choose my favourite, but I'd probably say the 17th of May, <laughs> 2003, which I followed up with, I love One Direction, hard to choose a favourite, but I'd probably say left. <laughs> I said, oh my God, they will have seen that picture of Jeremy Corbyn that I put on a bin in my car and called it Jeremy Carbin. <laughs> They will have seen that tweet which I did, which is, I like my women how I like my coffee. Nowhere near my penis. <laughs> and I suppose if they're looking into the future, they're about to see a painting I'm going to do of the man that runs your building, because I've done some Googling and I know what he looks like. And it's just him in the office saying, No, I'm Rhubarb King. <laughs> you have been an extraordinary audience. Um, so, I obviously wasn't done with RBS. Of course I wasn't. I felt like what they'd done was an attack on fun and on silliness. I felt like um, what it, uh, there were people that work in that building that want to be daft and silly at points in their lives and they have to extinguish that desire in the name of security and corporate rules. And I felt that was sad. So I got the email address of the man that runs the building from Peter and I set up a rhubarb bikini email account and I sent him an email. It read, to the manager, I am Ruba Bikini. <laughs> and I gather you are looking for me. You have been led to believe that I am the comedian Joe Lysett. But this is not accurate. For I am at once all things and no thing. <laughs> I am a whisper in a dream. I am a homeless man in search of a manual for a Fiat Punto. <laughs> I am Tom Daly's missing finger. I am a light bulb in my kitchen. I am a glory hole in a glass door. <laughs> I am a seller of adult DVDs. <laughs> I am a master painter. I am an online troll. <laughs> and I am children's TV entertainer Paul Chuckle. Right. <laughs> I asked for one of these, he sent dozens. <laughs> I am all the colours in the rainbow, I am near and I am far. I am everyone you'll ever know, I am each pound in the jar. You can never stop me, for I will always be. Your staff will never show you, so you will never see. But in each of them is nonsense. I know this to be true. So all your staff are rhubarb, and rhubarb bikini is you. <laughs> I also put PSM also Alexa. I'm rhubarb bikini, and you should suck a dog's cock. Thank you so much for coming to my show. Have a great rest of your weekend and lives. Thank you so much. <laughs>